Many times trees and shrubs in the landscape have dead branches. Sometimes the homeowner thinks that it's lawnmower injury or the neighbor dumped something on the lawn or maybe a lawn care person put too much of the wrong stuff on the lawn. Here's a typical plant. This is a hawthorn that's showing some dead branches. And one thing to notice is it's not primarily the upper branches or the lower branches. It's branches kind of scattered on this particular tree. Now, how would you go about diagnosing exactly what's killing these branches? It's good if you can look at the entire tree like we have here today, because then you can look for these other signs that something might be going wrong. Now, the homeowner wasn't using any special fertilizer. They just fertilized the lawn as usual, and they weren't doing anything special to this plant. So that kind of eliminates that they over-fertilized or caused some kind of damage that way. Then, if we look at the base of the tree, we can see here that it looks pretty good. There aren't any signs of wounds or severe damage from a lawnmower or anything like that. There's no signs of insect activity either. So those things aren't killing the base of the tree. If they were, oftentimes what happens is major branches are killed, and oftentimes it's primarily the upper branches on the tree. But here we just have scattered ones. And if we look closely, some of these branches have just short dead stubs of uh, tissue that's been killed and also some of the flower parts are still hanging on this plant from last spring. Now if we go to the literature and take a look at some of the different things that might be causing branch dieback on a hawthorn, one disease that we'll find is called fire blight. And if we read the entire description of fire blight, it does note that the branches will be killed and turned very dark brown to black, and also you'll have dead aborted flower parts on the plant. Now what we should do is go ahead and take some samples and then try to uh, confirm the diagnosis that it could be actually fire blight. And to do that, what we need to do is remove a branch, and if it is fire blight, we want to make sure that we don't spread the disease. So we want to find the base of the dead area, and on this branch, it looks like it's right in this area where the, the dead tissue or dying tissue meets the live tissue. And then we want to go back about eight inches or a foot and remove it. So it looks like we should cut it off right about here. And then we can put this branch in a plastic bag with a dry paper towel. Now you want to make sure you put in a dry paper towel and not a wet paper towel because uh, the moisture from the wet paper towel will make the specimen deteriorate. So we can go ahead and, and take the sample back to the lab and cut it open and look for the area where the live tissue meets the dead tissue. You'd want to cut several branches so that uh, you have some to cut open and yet you want other branches to send to a plant disease clinic for final diagnosis. Now, as we read through the description, it does become pretty clear that this is, in fact, fire blight. And fire blight is caused by a bacterium. Now, the bacteria get in the, the flower parts, move in through the flower parts and into the branch, and down into larger and larger branches, and that's actually where the bacteria overwinter. The name of the bacterium is Erwinia amylavera. Now, one symptom to look for on uh, fire blight is that, in fact, you have smooth tissue on the branches that are affected, and the canker is smooth, and there are no fungal fruiting structures. Now, a fungal fruiting structure is a uh, structure in which fungi that cause plant diseases form spores and then spread from those areas to new branches. And here we have a sample that is infected with a fungus. And on this particular branch, you can see the small black fungal fruiting structures. Whereas with a fire blight sample, the branch is very smooth and there aren't any roughenings or little black fungal fruiting structures. So this is fire blight. Once we had a positive diagnosis of this particular disease, then the question becomes what should we do in order to control it? 
for the homeowner, there really aren't any sprays that can be applied to control this particular disease. And what has to be done is the infected branches need to be pruned out. And so the best time to prune out the branches is during the dormant season. During the growing season, the bacteria ooze out of the cankers and run down the branch. And if you cut through that ooze, you just inoculate or you spread the bacteria into that cut. And so it's best to do it during the dormant season when the bacteria are not active. If you do it during the dormant season, you find that base of the dead area where it meets the live tissue, and then you only need to go back maybe four to six inches to cut it out. If you wait until the growing season uh, has started, then you have to go back at least a foot. Now, when you do the pruning, you want to make sure that the bacteria are not spread to each cut that you make. And so you need to clean your pruning shears. And the easiest way to do that is just to have a, a cat, coffee can full of 70% uh, alcohol. So, like, it could be uh, rubbing alcohol or wood alcohol, or you can use something like a household bleach, one part uh, bleach to nine parts water, and just put the pruning shears in that and keep it wet for about 10 minutes, and that will kill the bacteria. So that's the main way that you have available to you to control fire blight, is to prune it out.